for the past two weeks, I've gotten on here and said that Fashion Week is over. It really is over this time. I have nothing else to discuss from Fashion Week. This week, we're going to move on. We're on to something new, finally. Um, still going to get fashion news and any other updates in the fashion industry. And yeah, so stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Adriana. I used to work in the fashion industry. I don't anymore. Now I live a very boring life and I just shop. If you're not new here, I'm still dealing with the ramifications from last week's pimple that was in the middle of my forehead. I don't want to talk about it. We can jump into the video. Also, I want to take this time out to say happy birthday to my grandfather. He passed away in 2014, but it's his birthday today and he's the greatest man I've ever known. So I keep lying to you, so this relationship isn't starting off on a trustworthy foot. But I do have one last piece of information from Paris Fashion Week. I kept forgetting to bring it up last week, so it's kind of cold tea. It's not new news, but Coperni um, debuted their new Air Swipe Bag. It's the same shape as their popular swipe bag, of course, but this one is made from silica aerogel. It's the material that NASA uses to collect stardust. And it is 99% air. The outside has a similar chemical composition to gas, and the inside is air. And um, it was developed by a Greek researcher and visual artist. So super cool. It's supposedly the lightest material known on Earth. So ain't no telling how much that's going to cost. But that's it. Okay, that's it. That's the last piece of Fashion Week news. Okay, I promise. I'm for real this time. Lori Harvey is the digital cover star for Numero Netherlands' newest edition. And I guess she's supposed to be doing the alt girl look that JT and Cardi B and, of course, other actual, like, alternative emo girls have been wearing for decades. But she's trying her hand at it. The styling is kind of different than what Lori Harvey usually brings. In the article, she does kind of touch on some things I really didn't know about her. I didn't know that she was an equestrian and she's apparently highly decorated and she was on track to go to the um, Olympics, but she sustained an injury. I didn't, I really didn't know that about Lori Harvey. Um, I don't have anything against Lori Harvey at all. I just think it's interesting how she kind of looks boring to me all the time. And I mean that in the nicest way, because of course she's always polished. She has good pieces. Um, she can, her team can definitely pull good archive pieces, but I don't know. I want her to do something else, but then I also understand that's not fair because I don't feel like Lori Harvey gets the just do that she has earned as one of the originators of the quiet luxury trend. I don't like that trend, but I feel like Lori Harvey was doing that way before Sophia Richie and before a lot of the other girls that, well, I mean, I guess that that's their aesthetic. And that's an actual aesthetic that people have been doing, but it just got a name attached to it now. But Lori Harvey was doing that way before it became popular and it got that name. And so I don't think she gets the respect that she deserves in that aspect. Nobody ever mentions Lori Harvey in Quiet Luxury. And to me, she is the quintessential Quiet Luxury girl because you may not realize how much her pieces cost, but if you know, you know. And Lori Harvey be having this shit on. I really want to go through her closet. But I got off on a tangent. As usual, I just wanted to say that Lori Harvey is the new cover girl for uh, Numero Netherlands. And the article is pretty interesting. I did learn some things about her that I didn't know before. Really only the, um, the equestrian thing. I already knew she had a skincare line. I already knew that she had a swimwear line. So, yeah, Lori Harvey used to ride horses. Sales grew around 17% in 2023 at the Prada Group, and those sales were mainly driven by the Chinese market and by Miu Miu. Um, when Miu Miu first started, it was supposed to be the little sister of Prada. It was supposed to be the less expensive version, but now they neck and neck. <laughs> like, Miu Miu costs as much as or more than Prada now. Um, I have a pair of Miu Miu shoes that I've been having for literally years, and I think I only pay, like, 350 maybe 450 for those shoes if i can find a picture then i'll post the picture i'm sure they're not clear in the picture um but yeah i've had those shoes for a long time maybe since i managed at nordstrom 
And at the time, nobody really necessarily knew what Mew Mew was. And now it's that girl. So kudos to Mew Mew for putting pocket, I mean, for putting money in Prada's pockets because they are doing it big now. Chanel prices are rising again. Surprise, surprise. You know, the people at Chanel think that they in competition with Hermes. It's a one-sided competition. I'm sure Hermes do not even care. But they put out a propaganda article. It's definitely propaganda. Because in the article, they kind of explain that like the bags and the craftsmanship behind the bags is what justifies the prices. And to be honest, I've been hearing a lot of horror stories about Chanel's like quality and how the quality is going down. And the last time I went in Chanel, I went in for earrings and I like tried on a flap and the hardware was scratched. So <laughs> quality question mark. But I just can't see myself buying a flat bag. I do have a Chanel bag already. Um, it's a denim piece. And I think I showed it in a previous video in my favorite handbags video. But I just can't see myself spending the money on a flap. If I'm going to put the money aside for a flap, then I might as well put the money aside for a Kelly or an Hermes or a Birkin or something else. I may buy a flap pre-loved, but yeah, I don't know if I'll ever go in a store and give Chanel eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. i am sorry. Matches Fashion was just acquired by, I want to say, Fraser's Group or Fraser's Group, um, maybe a few months ago for like $66 million dollars. But they're being close. That's what this story is about. They are shuttering Matches Fashion because they haven't been able to turn a profit, apparently. Um, a lot of the brands are severing ties with Matches because they haven't been paying their bills, the ghetto. But, yeah, that's just the news. Matches Fashion is being shuttered. Sad day. I don't really shop on Matches, honestly, so I don't really care. A couple of news outlets, including Outlander Magazine, call me. I kind of want to work with y'all. But they have been doing articles and a lot of people have been saying the same thing that I've been saying for the past couple of months. Fashion is boring now. It's getting weird. People are not being creative. Maybe everybody needs to take a sabbatical and just get their creative juices running again. Uh, Dimna, number one. I talked about that last week. A lot of creative directors are leaving. Like I mentioned last week, the Lacoste new, has a new creative director um the creative director for blue marine left after one season it's just every i don't know what's going on right now i really don't but i don't like it i don't like it i used to love the game now like i said it's getting weird this next section is just rapid fire fashion updates that i don't really have an opinion about but I'm gonna just talk about them so that you know maybe you care if you want to sound off in the comments and say your opinions do that but i don't really have a specific opinion about it number one denim tears and um come de garçon are doing a collaboration i mean okay whatever naomi campbell debuted her collection with boss and it looks exactly how you would expect a boss line to look there's nothing exciting nothing fresh or new about it naomi campbell also did um, a line with pretty little things so Maybe she should just wear the clothes and not necessarily have input on them. Oh, Naomi Campbell also has a new exhibit honoring her uh, modeling career at the Victoria and Albert Museum. It's supposed to show pieces that she's worn throughout the years. Super cool. Um, Naomi is in a little bit of fire. It's a little bit of scandal, a scandalo <laughs> around Naomi Campbell right now. So I'm not touching it. That's just the news about her. Um, what else happened? Laura Piana is not paying them people, child. <laughs> I'm not surprised. That's why I'm laughing. So Laura Piana has a sweater that's made from Vicuña wool, and it retails for close to $9,000, I believe. But an article came out um, from, of course, Business of Fashion that explained that the farmers, well, the community that is helping to herd the vicuñas for Laurel Piana to use that material, they're only getting paid $280, which means the farmers themselves are basically getting pennies. That's not fair. But again, are we surprised? No. But I have felt one of those Laurel Piana vicuña sweaters very soft okay it's giving very luxe very rich it's giving what the fuck is cashmere okay so they need to pay them people 
that's pretty much it. Everybody deserves to have a livable wage. I am very, very loud about that and how I feel that it's only fair that everybody can feed themselves. So the fact that they are charging $9,000 for their sweater and a whole community is getting $280, no. Something else. Try something else. Like paying people. The Image Awards were last night, and it was a room full of Black people in their Sunday's best, so honestly, everybody looks good. I don't have a best or worst. Um, if I could pinpoint some memorable looks, I do remember Fantasia looking great, as usual. They've been killing her styling and stuff for the past year. Um, Kiki Palmer looked really good. She had on a suit, and that is it. Oh, Erica Alexander... Last week, I kind of trashed her, but this week, I really did like her Image Awards look. It was still super colorful, but it was more a little bit more polished than it has been for the past few award shows. But as I'm talking, I'll pop in pictures of all of the beautiful Black people that were at the awards last night. Again, everybody looks good. I mean, we're Black, so... But also at the NAACP Image Awards, June Ambrose was honored with the Fashion Vanguard Award, which is definitely deserved. June Ambrose has been giving the industry so many looks and so many gems for decades. June Ambrose styled Belly, which is a movie with a terrible plot, but great looks, iconic scenes. Uh, June Ambrose has been styling Jay-Z for years, so well-deserved. Congratulations to June Ambrose. She wore a cute little like a uh, polka dotted Marc Jacobs dress to the event. I believe Kelly Rowland presented the award to her and why do people, another sidebar. Kelly Rowland is not discussed enough when people talk about fashion and looks. She always is put together. Her stylist and her team understands a complete look, like I mentioned last week. It's not just the dress or the outfit and the shoes. You have to take the hair into consideration. You have to take jewelry into consideration, makeup. And Kelly Rowland does that so well. You know who else does that? You know what? I just realized what I'm going to do a video on later this week. So never mind. In my next video, I'll discuss all of the other people who don't get enough credit for always looking perfect at any event. Okay, we're at the end of the video. Like I said earlier, nothing exciting happened. So this is a relatively quick one. Hopefully it'll be easy to edit so I can go on and do something else with my time. But thanks for returning. If you're new, again, thanks for stopping by. Make sure you subscribe and like. Make sure you share. Tell all your friends. If you don't have a YouTube account, so that's why you're not subscribed, go ahead and make a YouTube account for your girl. It's easy. It's simple. You're sitting there. You're on the couch. You're not doing nothing. You're watching TV. Go ahead and make a YouTube account so you can subscribe to my channel. Have a good day or have a good week, rather, since it's Sunday. Bye.